India at 75. What does that evoke? What does India at 75 mean for you? As a, you know, it's fairly remarkable that India has risen the geopolitical hierarchy so quickly. It was the 10th largest military spender in the world in 2009. Today it's the third. And yet it hasn't become a destabilizing international actor. In fact, I would argue it's become more responsible. It's not aggressively seeking to redress historical grievances. It's not bullying its neighbors. It's not seeking to reclaim lost territory. In fact, it's settling its uh, disputes responsibly in international forums. It's being more magnanimous in its neighborhood. Um, it's treating its neighbors more kindly than it had in the past. It is defending the rules-based order. Uh, it's being a good partner to the West. Uh, it's being courted by international capitals across the world. And so, to me, I think th this has been a remarkable phenomenon in the way it has contributed to regional and global stability, and it's something to be applauded. These two last years have brought one positive image, one positive um, story, actually, if I look at the relations between Europe and India. And that is the story, or let's say this watershed moment in the relations, the realization we need to do more in bilateral and in multilateral terms. This was definitely a watershed moment in the understanding about how important India has become for the global order, for the so-called rules-based order that the European Union and the European member states actually uh, want to see strengthened? I think that India's definition in the world is increasingly shaped by uh, the nature of India itself. Um, you know, if you look at all um, dimensions of foreign policy, India has had a remarkable economic transformation and growth now for a large number of years. And it is becoming an increasing player in global trade on the world stage. Um, to some degree, obviously, in, in the medical issues we had during, during uh, COVID. And uh, for that reason, you know, it's, it's increasingly relevant to investors, uh, to business people around the world. Um, likewise, um, the nature of India as a free and democratic society uh, is, I think, starting to more dramatically shape its alliances and relationships than would have been the case 20, 30 years ago. And, and finally, um, you know, on the security front, uh, and this is where I think India is to some degree, like all of us, India is, is to some degree not just shaping its own destiny, but being shaped by the world around us. I think that uh, one of the major differences that I'm feeling back here in Delhi from uh, in relation to the period a uh, decade or so ago when I lived here, uh, is India's availability now not only to have an enormous impact upon the world, which is related to its, its sheer scale, its population, its growth, but its availability to shape the world that we're living in as well, and its consciousness about the need to do so, and uh, that uh, India has uh, not only the capacity to impact upon the world, but actually it needs to do so. And what this means, uh, I believe, is that India is thinking deeply about the kind of uh, international governance that it can contribute to. Uh, when we are looking at India at 75, it's not just India at 75, we are also looking at another 25 years ahead. You know, what have we done where have we fallen short? What do we want to do? Because those are often the conversations we have uh, when we go out. If I were to pick a single thing we've done, a difference we've made to the world in the last 75 years, it is the fact that we are a democracy. Uh, if today there's a sense in the world that, you know, for all the, the ups and downs of history, what's happening in different geographies, but somehow in all of us there is that gut sense that democracy is in some form the future. A large part of it is due to the choices that India made and choices that India stuck with 
in very difficult situations. And there was a time when in this part of the world, we were pretty much the only democracy. So if democracy is global today, or we see it as global today, I think in some measure that credit is due to India. Ghar, ghar,